Just make linking material to the playlist videos, I said. It'll be easy, I said. Okay, I sniped myself. But I hope you find all this hard work was worth it. We've been through a lot. We looked at the source of the problem. We went over the data. We debunked claims about overdoses and debunked the fear-mongering. And we saw how the CDC not only doesn't care that they're literally creating suffering and driving people to take their own lives, they based it all not on science, but the work of a PR firm. To bring it all home, let's listen to another edition of the podcast to show the complicity of the news media, in particular CBS News. See how they massively exaggerate the numbers and what happens when you put the actual numbers in context. Top 10s did a video about the opioid thing, and it was kind of cringeworthy because, like, they were talking about it was a big problem. They said, did you know that America consumes 80% of the opioids in the world? And I'm like, what does that mean? If that were about any other medicine and it were in a universal health care country, they would say, oh, see how great it is to get health care in these countries? But, yeah. Got to change the rhetoric. Well, this hysteria seems to have started with that 60 Minutes expose, which largely seems based on this CBS news story from August 1st, which is chock full of misinformation. They make this huge deal about widespread addiction and overdose death from opioids. But hey, I thought that was supposed to be reduced when Obama recategorized them as Schedule 2. And the thing is, 90% of what people say about opioids, you can say about any over-the-counter drug. You know, you can get addicted to aspirin, for Christ's sake. Well, and if you just want to talk about deaths, acetaminophen is actually pretty bad. I mean, it's not addictive, but people, you know, it's in headache medicine, it's in a lot of sinus medicines and cold medicines, and it is not good for your liver. But I mean, th this is what we keep seeing. The war on drugs keeps having the opposite effect from the one intended. Yeah, and that's another thing I, I also would like to say is that, look, even if what they're saying about opioids is true, let me ask you this. How is restricting it going to make the problem go away? No, it's not. It's just going to make it worse. Yeah, you know, I mean, we know the dangers of heroin. Heroin is addicting, and it is really messed up, but people still do it, and it's illegal. Well, they rely on Dr. Wilson Compton, Deputy Director for the U.S. National Institute on Drug Abuse, who said, quote, the proportion of adults who receive these medications in any year seemed startling to me. It's an awful lot of people who take these, mostly for medical purposes, but within that, a significant percentage end up misusing them. Remember that phrase, a significant percentage, because we'll go over the numbers a little later. He wants people to suffer instead. Quote, in many cases, physicians could write smaller prescriptions or avoid them completely for those who will benefit from ibuprofen or acetaminophen. Yeah, who cares about the fact that those aren't anywhere near as effective as opioids for pain relief? Oh yeah, they always say, like, well, why can't you use other medicines? This medicine works just as well and it's available. Well, maybe for you, but not for other people. This is based on a study of 51,200 people covering the year 2015. Let's look at their own numbers, and remember, these are the numbers they're trying to use to scare you, right? 92 million Americans were prescribed opioids in 2015. 11.5 million misused them. But understand, misuse just means they took them without a doctor's prescription. Two-thirds of them said that they were only doing this to relieve pain. And that's what happens when government strong-arms doctors to make them stop prescribing opioids. People suffering from chronic pain become so desperate for relief they turn to the black market. Oh, yeah. But that doesn't make it abuse by any definition any sane person would use. In fact, one of the reasons why people take so many of those pills is because doctors are under a lot of pressure not to prescribe so many, you know, and as a consequence, people will say, but that's not enough. I'm in severe chronic pain. I need more than that, so they end up getting, taking more. I'll be honest, I've honestly considered it just because it's so difficult to go through the whole rigmarole of, because you can't refill the prescription, you have to go and get it, and, but hey, you know, on the dark web, I could just order them and they'll deliver them to my door. I mean, I haven't done it. You know, but, I mean, it is just so ridiculous going through this long, involved process to do it. I actually posted that on a video one time that was criticizing opioids and all that, and I said, yeah, you see, you know, the one or two people who were legitimately addicted, you know, get better and treated, but what you don't see are the people who are in a forever state of constant pain because they can't get their medicine. The number of Americans actually addicted to opioids is 1.9 million. 1.9 million out of 92 million prescribed users is about 2.1%. And by the way, that figure of addiction includes heroin, so the real percentage is somewhat lower. 
most people who are prescribed opioids are never in any danger of becoming addicted to them. Oh, yeah. It's pretty funny because they consider, you know, you take a lot of pills because you're in so much pain that they consider that addiction. And, well, it's not really. Yeah, you're, you're addicted to not being in pain. That's what you're addicted to. Yeah, you know, an addiction is a chemical dependency. That's where you have no legitimate need to take, you know, whatever you're taking, but you do because you have this strong psychological need, but I need it so badly. That's what an addiction is. Yeah. Now, if you follow their link to the deaths from prescription opioids, you'll see that they totaled 17,536 in 2015. That sounds like a lot, but in proportion to the number of people prescribed opioids, that's 0.019%. More people are killed by diabetes. More people are killed by the flu and pneumonia or arteriosclerosis. Far more people die of obesity-related illness. And heck, according to the British Medical Journal, you're 14 times as likely to be killed by a doctor making a mistake than to die of an overdose of prescription opioids. Yeah. And going back to the whole obesity thing, you know, one of the reasons why we see a lot of people with those things that cause chronic pain, you know, obese is not because they're lazy. It's because when you're in so much pain, you can't get up and walk, you know. Yeah, exercising is difficult when you're in pain. Yeah. I try my best, but I mean, you know, I can't build up any kind of endurance or anything. It's there's just too much. And by the way, you're twice as likely to die from tripping over your own furniture. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. When we use their own numbers, these are the numbers used by the people trying to scare you. We see that the vast, overwhelming majority of people who are prescribed opioids never become addicted, and deaths from addiction are actually fairly rare by comparison to many other risks. I mean, if you're not screaming that everyone who can should get the flu vaccine, then you need to shut up about prescription opioid overdoses. Yeah. Because more people are dying from flu. And I'll say it again, addiction is a symptom. People do not become addicted because they swallowed a pill. They become addicted because they have some underlying psychological or neurological issue driving the addiction. Yep. Here's what I want everyone to do, especially those who are participating in all this hysteria about it and people like No Bullshit, who is normally a good YouTuber, but he you know, jumped on this bandwagon about it. I want all of you to please... Try to fathom pain that is there 24-7 and never stops. Can you try to just grok being in that situation and having the knowledge that, barring a medical advance, you will be in pain every single moment of every single day for the rest of your life? Yeah, I if you don't mind me asking, Shane, like, what was exactly the damage that in that car accident that actually caused you to feel permanent physical pain like did you suffer some nervous system damage or uh well it was pretty much all up and down my right side i've got all sorts of hardware in my uh right arm and my right leg and they also had to do things like cut out a piece of my hip to do a bone graft in my arm and stuff like that and there's also just all sorts of just tissue damage and stuff like that that's just you know you can't you can't fix that you know, there's back surgery that they can do, but the side effects of the back surgery are even worse. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's just do what you can to manage the pain. I mean, I pretty much have a pretty good quality of life. I have pretty much a normal range of motion, and I can pretty much get up and do what I need to get done. But, man, the opioids help. They take my pain down from, like, a 6 down to, like, a 2. Uh, I mean, you, 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 you just have no idea if you, if you haven't been through that. You have no idea. And really what you have to imagine is that not even with the opioids do we ever get completely out of pain. It just becomes low enough that we can deal with it a little better. Yeah. And that's really all we're wanting here. Now, I also have to throw a brick bat at CBS News for something unrelated, but because of what they did to Silver Clue on Laureate Miles Power, they made a story promoting the use of chlorine dioxide and industrial bleach as MMS, Mineral Miracle Solution, as a cure for everything from malaria to autism. Yeah, I heard that one time. Yeah, there was that, that one person that said you can cure autism by shoving, you know, like certain industrial chemicals down their throat. And, and I'm like, what? Yeah, well, a while back, Miles made a video showing how it was all crap, as if anyone with more than two brain cells to knock together needed him to, but... At the end of the video, he just tries drinking it, and despite the fact that he diluted it, he immediately spat it out, because it was even more horrendous than he thought it would be. But CBS just showed the clip of him drinking it, 
and cut away just before he spits it out to make it look like he was promoting it. Yeah, they do shit like that. And understand, his video quite clearly showed that not only did MMS not do what they claim it does, but it was dangerous as well, possibly even fatal. In all honesty, I think that's intentional because I think some of these people want other people to die. You know, well, it's fake news. They're trying to get clicks. They're trying to get views. They're trying to get ad dollars. They also included a clip from earlier in his video where he holds up a couple of bottles and says, this is MMS, and they cut his sound right after he says that because he immediately says, pretty much in the same sentence, that it's industrial bleach and you shouldn't use it. Now that had to have been deliberate. They know the truth. They know what he really said, and they deliberately misled their viewers, putting them in danger. I don't want to sound like I'm blaming, you know, the patient and all that, but, you know, a biggest problem that people fail to realize is that they just don't trust their doctor, you know, and, it, and they love portraying doctors as, like, these corrupt guys who only care about money and all that, but most doctors have your good intention in mind, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's the people who make crap like MMS who are just in it for the money. Yeah, you know, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the anti-autism movement with Jenny McCarthy. You know, I mean, I tell people all the time, what does Jenny McCarthy have that qualifies her as a medical expert? And people said, well, yeah, she's not a medical expert, but she's a concerned mom. And that makes her uh, reliable because... Well, I mean, it's like, you know, like people like Joseph Merkula, you know, they're all like about, oh, well, you know, those doctors are just in it for the money and Big Pharma's just in it for the money. And he has this store where he sells things that are like way overpriced and don't even work, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I mean, this infuriates me. It really makes my blood boil. CBS is fake news. I mean, come on. They encouraged their viewers to drink a dangerous bleach that has no medical benefits. And I mean, this whole panic about opioids and the continued oppression of chronic pain sufferers is almost entirely their fault. What are we doing? What is the reason for all this? There's no sense to any of it! This is nothing short of bigotry and oppression, and it's being committed by both political parties, by both left-wing and right-wing media, and even professional organizations. But the only way any of this changes is if we get the truth out, share the data, share this playlist, and correct anyone you hear repeating any of these myths especially if they're a politician. So thank you so much for watching this playlist. Please remember to hit like and subscribe and share this playlist everywhere you can. Also, leave a comment on these videos, and if you like what I'm doing, you can support me at donate.bogosity.tv. You can give a one-time donation or become a supporter at Patreon, Subscribestar, or Discord. Thank you again for watching. Stay strong and be free.